The Euphrates River finally dried up, but now something has emerged. The Euphrates River is located in a crucial location not too far from the locations of Syria, Turkey, and Iraq. Its importance can be increased morally when we examine its contribution to history. The Euphrates is the longest and is one of Western Asia's most historically significant rivers. Scientists are still trying to understand the shrinking of the river. Water is the most important thing on the planet, but why do we still need to learn how to use water properly? The Euphrates River is the reason for the prosperity of ancient civilizations in the Near East. It's now drying up. We're all aware of the Euphrates River, but did you know how much history it holds and how impressive it can be? Though the river has been around for 6,000 years, we've only just now discovered precisely how deep its true power runs. Tune in and watch more on this episode of the Euphrates River. The significant part of this discovery is that it is thought to be the most ancient tunnel in the world, and they're currently exploring it along with ancient ruins that they've also emerged on the Euphrates River. But before starting this video, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. We'll make more videos on interesting topics, so if you want to watch them, subscribe to them. Now, let's get started. Iraq's drought reveals a city that's 3,400 years old. Iraq is currently experiencing its worst drought in several decades. Communities that rely on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers for their water source have been deprived of the water they require to exist due to inadequate resource management and a lack of precipitation. To prevent the crops from becoming parched, the authorities in the country's Kurdistan region emptied a portion of the reservoir contained within the Mosul Dam. As it turned out, the choice saved more than just the crops. Archaeologists had only a few days to examine the area before the water began to return, but they were able to successfully map what they believed to have been a significant city in the Mitanni Empire, which was built 3,400 years ago. People in the vicinity were aware of the city's existence when the dam was constructed in the 1980s. However, the structures and artifacts that survived the earthquake that had leveled the city around 1350 BCE had never been thoroughly explored. Parts of the city first emerged from the depths in 2018 due to extreme drought. Researchers explored a lost palace with massive walls approximately 6 feet thick and 22 feet high during this brief period. Inside these walls, they found remains of wall paintings in vibrant shades of red and blue. On the other hand, the archaeologists needed more time to map the city before the water rose again adequately. Therefore, in a matter of days, a study team was put together in order to rush out to the site as soon as the drought struck again this year. As a result of the mapping of multiple significant buildings and the discovery of hundreds of artifacts by the team, archaeologists now have a clearer picture of what this ancient metropolis may have looked like in its heyday. There was a fortification with a wall and towers, a multi-story storage building, and an industrial complex among the buildings discovered. The massive magazine building is of great significance since it must have been used to store enormous quantities of products, presumably brought in from throughout the entire region. The location served as a significant hub for Mitanni Empire activity. Even though they were constructed of sun-dried mud and had been submerged for more than 40 years, the team was impressed by how well many of the walls were preserved. Some of these walls reached almost 10 feet in height, and the team was particularly impressed by how well these walls were preserved. That was brought on by the earthquake that leveled the city. The highest portions of the walls were reduced to rubble, which buried and shielded the lower parts of the city for a considerable amount of time. Also, remarkably well-preserved are five ceramic containers with a total of over 100 cuneiform tablets, some of which are still encased in the clay in which they were found. The underwater survival of unfired clay tablets has been described as near to a miracle. These tablets, some of which may have been letters, will give more insight into what the city and its daily life were like at the time. Probably, this location was once home to the ancient city of Zakiku, which served as an important center throughout the Mitanni Empire's reign, which lasted from around 1500 to 1350 BCE. The empire was one of some kingdoms and stated that the Indo-Iranians established in Mesopotamia and Syria. At its height, the empire covered slightly over 600 miles, stretching from the Zagros Mountains to the Mediterranean Sea. In the early years of the Mitanni Empire, Egypt and the Mitannis fought each other for control of Syria. Around 1420 BCE, the Mitannis and Egypt's pharaoh Thutmose IV agreed to end the fighting. The Assyrians quickly acquired control of the region after the Mitannis were defeated by the Hittite Empire about 1360 BCE. 
This is not the only deserted town that drought has brought up from the depths this year. Nonetheless, the discovery of this underwater metropolis is genuinely astounding. The Spanish community of Aceredo, which had been submerged when the Alto Lindoso Reservoir was created in 1992, was uncovered as a result of a drought. Even while the tops of houses are often visible when the water levels in the reservoir drop, whole buildings have never been revealed before this winter because climate change caused the winter to be abnormally dry. Even more ancient artifacts may be uncovered during a drought. Iraq is being hit particularly hard by global warming, with temperatures rising twice as fast as the global average. Average annual rainfall is down by 10%. As a result, historic wetlands have dried up, livestock are dying, and people are struggling to get fresh water. The 4,000 to 7,000-year-old megalithic monument known as the Dolmen of Guadalperal emerged in 2019 when drought hit a Spanish reservoir that had covered the stones for about 60 years. Since there is still enough water, the Mosul Reservoir could be replenished, stopping the examination that the researchers were doing. Before the floods completely reflooded the region again, the team quickly covered the area in tarps and then topped them with gravel as a protective measure for the city. Since the Euphrates River has dried up, a strange tunnel has been found. The Euphrates, one of the longest rivers in Western Asia and one of the most historical significance, has completely dried up. This has had a significant impact on the lives of a variety of ancient people. This prophecy of a drying up of the land has not only been fulfilled in our time, but also appears to have been written in the Bible. As a result of it drying up, many old discoveries that have astonished people worldwide have emerged. A man may be seen in a video taken not too long ago, demonstrating a significant decline in the water level of the Euphrates River. In the past few years, the river water started to dry up nearly. In addition, the man demonstrated an ancient tunnel that leads to the underworld and has a perfect building structure. This tunnel also contains neatly arranged stairs and is still intact. Who built all of this? Many believe that this is a remnant from long-gone people that have been kept intact until our times. Nevertheless, there is talk among the villagers that the passageway leads to where the angels are held captive. This tunnel is called the Legendary Euphrates Tunnel, and it was built under the Euphrates River between 2180 and 2160 BCE to connect the two parts of the city of Babylon in Mesopotamia. After all of these, she dug a four-square pond in a low area of Babylon, with each square being 300 furlongs long, lined with brick and cemented with brimstone, and was 530 feet deep. She first diverted the river into this pond, and then she built a passage in the shape of a vault from one place to another with arches made of solid brick and bitumen four cubits thick on both sides. Along with and above the arches, the walls of this vault were 20 bricks thick and 12 feet high, and it was 15 feet wide. When this project was done in 260 days, the river was put back into its old path, so Samiramis could move from one place to the other without crossing the river. Construction of the tunnel is described in the life of Apollonius of Tiana as the city of Babylon being split in two by the river Euphrates, with each half having a roughly identical layout and a remarkable bridge passing underneath the river, connecting the palaces on either bank through an underground passage. But he does say that it was Queen Medea who commissioned its building. So that's all for today's video. If you like this video, click the like and the bell buttons. We'll have another video for you soon. Take care, until then.